Hello, everyone. My name is Edward Osfred Carr, and welcome to my YouTube channel talk show. This is a talk show where I interview various artists in the entertainment industry, and I have the great pleasure of talking with Nick Parler. He's an actor, singer, songwriter, musician, and host of his own Facebook talk show called Odd Jobs, the show about occupations. So relax and enjoy my talk with Nick Parler. Talking with Nick Parler. And how are you doing today, Nick? Doing good, Ed. I'm so excited to be on the show. And I'm excited to uh, excited to, uh, that uh, you're on the show uh, here to talk and uh, share share a little bit about yourself and uh, tell everybody what you're about. And um, uh, I always like to start off with uh, the question to anybody I interview, no matter if they're a singer, musician, dancer, or whatever. How did you get interested in acting? Tell uh, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Okay. So um, it, it's interesting. Like I think that people have like you. We all know what good characteristics are, and we have characteristics that hit us more at home in our hearts than other ones might. Mine is to to bring joy to people in every task, every job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. That has been my goal, just to find a way to make the world a better place by bringing just a little bit more joy into it. Yeah. And one day, it was it was 2018, I was, I was looking for, you know, just a, a brand new way to try and bring just a little bit more joy into the world. And I thought, I would love to be an actor. And I went down, uh, I went down the street to, uh, to our local theater uh -huh. and the rest is history <laughs> so, that, so that was like uh like a local uh, community theater then just uh for anybody that uh wanted to do, uh, audition and kind of try their acting uh, chaps out that's right that's mm -hmm. right i did that so i acted for it's a cool story so i acted for about a, about a year i did five plays Good uh man. five theater plays wow. and uh then uh, i i have this best friend and he, and he came to all my plays and, uh, and he, uh, one day he was sick and he didn't make it to one of my, so I'm thinking, wow, he must be pretty sick. So I went down to visit him and he, he had to go to work while I got there. So I'm walking around downtown Charlotte and, and I see this sign that says auditions. And, and I'm like, as an actor, you know, as a, a new actor, I'm thinking, Hmm, what is this? Is this something I'd be interested in? Let me, Peak my it peaked my yeah. curiosity. Let Definitely, me yeah. What's going yeah. On. And so I walked in, and it was a talent agency, oh, wow. and and it was awesome. And and in this time, they had us do a uh, perform a Sears commercial, an old Sears commercial. And in this tiny room, there it was before COVID. There was about a hundred people wow. in this tiny room, wow. and they had our our forms that we had filled out. And uh, and they come in, they say, you know. We liked we liked all of you, you know, out of the 100 people, there were 92, there's a stack of 92. And they said, we, we're going to offer you all some auditioning, uh, some auditioning, acting school references. Cool. We want you all to come back and try it. And, mm -hmm. and you're just not quite ready yet. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, I gave it a shot. Right, and so right. they read through the list of 92. And I'm thinking, they didn't say my name. What's going on? <laughs> you, so, so you didn't you assume that they didn't even know who you were, what your name was, and would probably never contact you again. Something that's like right. That's right. And mm -hmm. so, so there were. They said our next stack has two people, and it has everyone with the prerequisites that we look for, the great headshots, all of that. I wasn't one of those two either. <laughs> I was in the final group of six, and they said we liked you all. We saw something that we liked about okay. each of you. And we want to work with you all just, you know, just a few days, see if you can take direction, see what your potential might be. Right. And then at the, the end of the few days, we'll, we'll decide whether we want to sign you or not. And so I'm like, I was in that group and they worked with me for a few days. And uh, then uh, they said, we want to offer you a contract. And it was with uh, Evolution Models and Talent out of Charlotte, North Carolina, out of Atlanta. Oh, wow, way to go. And, uh, and they signed me and. And here we are. Yeah. So then when uh, you first uh, went in for that audition, 
you thought you were auditioning for like a play or something, but not necessarily auditioning for a talent agency. Is that? Uh, That's right. When when I know. saw the thing, when I saw the sign that said auditions, I you know I was like, let's just see what it is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, then I came in, and it turned out to be a talent agency, and I'm like, but let's give it a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you've been uh, you've been with them ever since then ever since been with them ever since I signed with them it was uh, January of 2020 okay. when I signed my contract and uh, then COVID hit pretty hard and so that was unfortunate but yeah, uh, yeah. it mm -hmm. worked out <laughs> <laughs> well it all worked uh, all worked out for the better yeah yeah uh, let's see well talking about uh, COVID and you know, how it changed uh, all of our uh, uh, careers and everything. So then when COVID hit and you could no longer, uh, say, audition through your agency for different projects, is that is that when you turn to Zoom? Because that's, I mean, that's where I first met you through Alpha NYC and all the uh, the Zoom uh, projects that they had. Is that is that when you went into Zoom? That's right. So I got a got an email uh, from um, Elizabeth Aquino, one of the great minds oh, yes. in, all of, in all of theater, all of acting, <laughs> all of anything, really. Definitely. And I got an email from her and, and uh, she uh, was uh, uh, saying, you know, come on, audition for this play. And uh, and so I'd never really thought about acting on Zoom before, but, but desperate times call for desperate that's measures. That's right. That's right. And, uh, yeah. and so I uh, I met uh, I auditioned for the show, and um, and then uh, we so that was for the Brothers Grimm Spectacular Thon. Okay. okay. And uh, and it just opened such a door uh, with the Alpha NYC to meet so many incredible people, it just does. like. House Red Car, of course. That's right. Um, and so her. many incredible <laughs> folks, um, and to to really work on work on so much of my craft, um, and you, there is just so much talent in in there the is. Alpha NYC. So there much, is. and, and, and uh, yeah. it's yeah. been amazing. And not only that, but uh, when you work on Zoom like that, you're absolutely working for, with people from all. I mean, essentially all over the world, not, you know, That's right. the country. And it's been so, so nice to kind of like, you know, interact with uh, with performers from all over the world and just make, pick a, you know, I think we all kind of like scavenge uh, each other's kind of ideas sometimes. You know, we let them know. We let them know oh, that, sure, uh, sure. you know, that's a, and you pick up so many different things. And it's just been so awesome and such yeah such a treat and such kind of kind of like throwing uh gasoline on the fire of my acting abilities that's right that's right once it's lit it's you're ignited and you just take off like a rocket right that's right ready yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ready to ready to shoot off <laughs> that's right that's right yeah, yeah uh, we're talking about uh meeting people actors from all over the country and in the world i, I can remember um with the Alpha NYC, it was uh, Lady Windermere's fan. That was uh, ah. one of their projects. And I happened to be privileged uh, to be in that there. And we had one fella that he was Zooming all the way from South Africa. And that's, oh, wow. I mean, you know, I've worked on projects where people have lived like in Canada, like on the West Coast or around Toronto, but uh, never like from South Africa. So when we were on like, when the show started, say seven or eight, eight o'clock at night here, Eastern time, it's sure. like he was acting like two or three o'clock in his morning. And that it's like that guy deserves a lot of credit. And it's that's like, right. A lot yeah. of dedication. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, kind of following uh, up uh, on that uh, with Zoom and everything, um, like on your Instagram, Facebook uh, pages, you uh, have uh, posts about that you've done things like in uh, online theater, uh, uh, film, uh, uh, state, essentially stage and film. And I was wondering, uh, is there any one of those mediums that you prefer one over the other? Or do you like them equally just uh, the way that they are just you know just by themselves is you know sure yeah. uh so that's that's an incredible question ed um <clears throat> so i like them all i love them all i love them all but i love them differently because they're all just so different 
Um, yeah. I'll, I'll run quickly kind of through what, what I love about them. I, uh, with, yeah. with like stage theater, I love the energy from the audience. Yes. And, and you know, yes. they're, they're laughing, they're, they're enjoying themselves. Yes. And yeah. it just, it adds, it, it adds to my performance. Yeah, yeah. I, totally, uh, just, I totally agree with you on that. You can feel, yeah, you can feel the energy. Feel the energy, that's right. Yeah. Um, film is, it's interesting because I think, I think every human, I think all of us, you know, the, the phrase, the actor's mask. I think humans, all of us maybe have at least a little bit of an actor's mask that we might show the world. Um, and sure. and film is interesting because you can meet someone exactly where they are. You know, they might be at home by themselves, and you can meet them in their most vulnerable, their rawest state, um, and and maybe you know bring them joy, uh, inspire them, maybe right. comfort them with with your performance. And I love that about them. Just just to try and make the world just a little bit better yes, by, yeah. by just trying to create something amazing in the lives of others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have, now we have, you know, virtual theater, which that's awesome. And, and I love how, how kind of convenient that is, you know, it's just, you it is. turn on the camera, uh, and meet incredible folks, perform with incredible people. And uh, and it's kind of like the same with film, you know, meeting uh, the audience exactly where they are uh, in their lives, in their proximity with with their homes, uh, with their hometowns. And it, it's just such a convenient way to to put on a show and to bring just a little vibrance into their life. And so that's they're all so different. They're all so awesome. Um, I can't pick which is my favorite. It's it's just such a tough question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, um, I, I think everybody feels the same way. They like you were saying, you love them all, but in different ways. Yeah. 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 You were talking about how uh, you can reach people in their most private moments at home, whether if they're watching a movie on TV or like you were saying, Zoom. And I've all, I don't know uh, if uh, you ever felt this way, like, whether it's like an onstage performance or a film performance, I always got the impression that like as an actor, to me, we're sort of like a, um, um, I don't know, like a health doctor or something, if you want to put it that way, that like if you're looking out into the audience, if you're on stage or if you're looking into the camera, if you're on Zoom or film or everything, I always thought that maybe in some way, what I'm doing or any of us are doing or saying on stage or on film, we're helping that person. Maybe they're going through a problem or some kind of decision in life. Right. And unbeknownst to us, and we may never know who that person is that we're reaching, but somehow we're helping them, I don't know, in, you know, in some way. So I don't sure. know if you've ever thought about it that way or, but that, I mean, that's, that's the, uh, the way that I've always felt about it. Sure, and that, that's a great point. It's it, we never know exactly what what someone else is going through, oh, that, and it yeah. can help them just just a little bit, you know, even one iota, just a little bit to to maybe like we say, find find that joy, maybe to maybe to forget about their circumstances for the moment, maybe to give them an idea of what to do in their circumstances. Right, right. Um, right. It, that's a great point, Ed. And, and it might be that, uh, say, like something we do or say on stage or in film, um, we not we might not realize maybe the true meaning of it ourselves. I mean, we have an idea of what we want to put across, but we have no way of knowing or we don't feel the same way about what we're saying as they do listening, you know, to what we're right. saying. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I've, I've always felt that we're doc. We're doctors in some <laughs> in some way, you know, one one way or another. But uh, that's right. Um, I wanted to like um, so one of my favorite films. Uh, this is this is um, it's Dead Poet Society with the late great Robin Williams. Oh yes, the late great. It's just that, you know it's an incredible genius. movie. Oh, and yeah. and like you were talking about how how we're kind of like doctors, you know, trying trying to to fix something to aid someone. In their moment of need, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And in that in that movie, uh, and like that movie did that for me. Um, you know, I was I, the first time I saw it, I was a teenager, and so you know, it's 
teenagers were, were in awkward times, you know, trying to figure out how our place in the world and how to That's navigate right. the That's world. Right. And I watched that movie and it changed my life. There's there's a quote in there. I'm going to butcher it, but it's it's an incredible quote. And it and it's something like that. And it's and it goes something like um, that pursuing, you know, medicine, pursuing business, pursuing these things. It's a great way to make a living and it's a noble pursuit. But but poetry, the arts, theater, it's what we stay alive for. Yes. And uh, and yeah. so that's that's a great point that, that we're kind of like medical doctors trying to maybe diagnose what's going on, aid someone in their time of need. And that movie did that for me and uh, changed my life. Yeah, it really well, I can did. very much see that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sort of like uh, the arts. I guess you could say it sort of gives uh, meaning to life. You know, we uh, we go to our jobs every day. It doesn't matter what we do, doctor, engineer, or whatever, teacher, whatever we happen to do. I mean, that's just sort of like the stuff of doing, the stuff that, you know, has right. to be done. But uh, I guess the arts just kind of help us to reflect on what we've done and, you know, where we are and, you know, where we want to be, where we're going, things like that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, taking uh, taking that a little uh, further, we're talking about alpha and, and everything like that. Um, I know we've we've been in several production in uh, the same productions, uh, uh, not always in the same cast, either cast A or cast B, uh, the way right. that Alpha has it set up. And so the ones that come to mind are uh, left to our own devices, uh, uh, 12 co incompetent jurors, uh, right. uh, 10 ways to survive life in quarantine, which was mm -hmm. kind of a statement about our social distancing and everything. And sure. And and even uh, 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 one of the the later ones, the, um, the that we did the um, with, um, uh, with yeah. Anna 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 Elizabeth Gant. She directed uh, uh, the Musgrave Musgrave uh, Richard. Right. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I mean, you've played all of these you know incredible characters and all of those projects and a lot more that you know I haven't mentioned. And so in each of those projects, you portray a character that might be totally 180 degrees from the other character. Maybe sure. some characters are more similar to other ones that you portray, but some of them are like maybe like direct, direct opposites. And so um, in approaching those roles, whether they're maybe very similar or vastly different from each other, um, is there a certain way that that you prepare for any role when you start out, uh, uh, sort of like a general method that you use to kind of attack what, you know, what your mission, you know, what your mission ahead is for the character. Sure. Uh, so uh, one one little side note, quick uh, that um, we've performed several times together. Ed, you are yeah. an incredible actor. Thank uh, you, I man. love and so acting are you. with you. You uh, you your performances have such nuance and. And uh, it's just a, a world of fun acting with you. And, and so I'm so appreciative that we've been in so many yeah, together. Yeah, thank you. And, and with you too, yeah, it's been an incredible thank experience you. with you as well, sure. Yeah. Uh, right. But to one, one of my methods, you know, there, there's a million methods. There there's is, there really is. One, more than one road to Rome on that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. probably my most uh, used method is to take the character and figure out how it relates to my life. Um, because I, uh, you know, I've seen the world from Nick Parlier's eyes, right, you know, right, right. Nick Parlier's eyes alone, you know, <laughs> and that, uh, and so I try to figure out sort of how, how the character relates to me and what sort of nugget in my life I can expand upon, uh, to, to create this character and just, you know, take that seed of, of who I am. And and put it into the character and just try to figure out how that blossoms right, right, and, right. Uh, and kind of become what it eventually becomes. Right. Uh, I do that, yeah. I do that with film. Do that with uh, uh, the alpha. Do that uh, yeah, with yeah. stage theater. It, that one. That's one of the ones that works in any venue. Yeah, um, yeah. I just seek and also one one you know kind of tidbit about acting that I that I try to do 
is is I try to really study the human condition and figure out what this character is feeling and how that relates to my body. Mm -hmm. And and I try to convey uh, my body in a way naturally, like if, if I'm nervous, you know, how do I make my body tense? You know, do, do I try and make the uh, maybe the a couple veins in my neck pop a little bit? Um, if uh, you know, if I'm smiling, you know, let my let my face just be naturally at ease, and then think of think of something funny that so my body will naturally kind of pick up that that right, happiness. Right, right. Right. Um, right. And so that's I think about my body, but also I think about how the character relates to me in the best way. And I just expand upon that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that so basically, uh, to assume a character, you you just start out with yourself, and then you build you you sort of build around that. Build from there. Okay. You know, it, uh, I'll give you an example. So in the uh, Ten Ways to Survive Quarantine, I was Jamal, and Jamal was was an awesome character, incredibly fun to play. Um, one of his greatest things is that. He creates uh, just really comfort. He created just a really comfortable place for himself: pillows, uh, you know, mattresses. Yeah, and he would yeah. like hide all of his stuff in the mattresses. In, I in think I, I think I remember you like eating a sandwich or a sub or a something. Sandwich, yeah. Yeah, I was, you were just like, being a town there. Yeah. yeah, I had a bag of pretzels underneath <laughs> one. I had a TV <laughs> remote under one, and after I did that role. That was so convenient after that. You know, I would just like, I have this, uh, I have this one chair. It's a reclining chair and it's, and, you know, I just lay back in it and I have stuff all in it, you know, just like, you know, the TV remotes in one pocket, maybe my <laughs> phone in another pocket, you know, I'll try to keep maybe a, a, a bottle of water somewhere in there. And it, it's so convenient, you know, all, like, all, like uh, all at an arm's, uh, all at an arm's length, right? Just so you can reach right. out and, uh, yeah. And I, yeah. you know, and I, I never get up again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, except except when you have to get out and uh, go to the grocery store to kind of replenish what's in your chair. Right. You know, you have but, you know, I, I take out my phone to fill out my shopping list. Now, <laughs> if I reach in that pocket. And I bet and I bet you have them deliver it to the house, too, right? The way deliver they deliver it to the house, <laughs> leave it by the door. You know, I'm not ready to get up yet. <laughs> yep. Kind of kind of wheel yourself from where you are. If the, your recliners on wheels kind of just push yourself across the floor and, and that's right yeah. ever since i was cast as jamal i gained about 40 pounds so. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that sounds like an awesome system too you know i mean convenience at a fingertip i think more of us should adapt that yeah that sounds, that's right that's, that sounds like an easy way to go through life yeah a lot, a lot less uh, hardship and a lot less uh, uh, co concentrating on trying to how to get things done if it's all at an arm's length there it is you know uh, That's right. And it's like we were talking about performances inspiring life. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so your 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 performances really did affect your life instead of the other way around, your life affecting your performances. Uh, That's right. Like uh, 50 50 equal like that. But yeah, you uh, like you were saying how you uh, 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 approach like a role. Uh, like uh, sometimes what I do is like say like if I get a script. And uh, like a lot of times they'll tell you, like when you first read through a script, don't don't like read it with any emotion, you know, just kind of understand mm -hmm. what's going on in the story. And then and then like after that, I'll sort of get a feeling of, well, I think maybe I want my character to act this way or that way. So then sure. I, I kind of add that layer and then I'll say, well, uh, how would this character like speak, talk, you know, his mannerisms? And then I can add that layer on top of that. So it's, well, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, similar to what you do, uh, things like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing that I've added recently, and you know, maybe, maybe I should have added this a long time ago, is I see, uh, I try to get to know my lines so well that it becomes like another person, another castmate uh, that I'm acting with. And, and you know, like I, I uh, just experience the lines as you're going, as you're going through them, and react, interact, and uh, and just pretend you know your lines so well that you pretend it's another castmate that you're acting with. Yeah, it's been helping me a lot lately. It's been been really beneficial. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, uh, besides uh, that audition that you did for the uh, uh, talent agency, and, uh, and like before that, like before 2018, when you first got into acting, and then 2020, when you finally got signed, uh, besides all of that and like your experience in theater or film or whatever, have you had any uh, uh, formal acting training besides that? Because I know I haven't, you know, I, I've never had any like formal acting training. So I, I was just wondering what your experiences were. Sure. Uh, so um, it's interesting. I, uh, so I was an actor in high school, um, okay. but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I, I turned out that I'm an actor who has to draw off of personal experiences. Yeah. So in, I wasn't, I wasn't like very good really um, because like, you know, at that moment in my life, I didn't have that many personal experiences to draw upon. Right, in my, right, right, right. And, uh, and so that's, uh, and so my acting career kind of started in high school. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't like, uh, you know, the, the plays were incredible, but you know, I just, I couldn't do what I can do now. Um, and so um, then when I got signed, uh, they uh, they put us through a just this really intense kind of training. Okay. And I learned a lot. Okay. learned just so much. I learned about uh, the importance. I'm one, Ed, who, who I have. I wake up in the morning. I'll give you, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, so when my mom, wild story, when my mom was was pregnant with me, she said very early on in the pregnancy, I started moving and then I never stopped. <laughs> and, so, and so it's carried on into life. I have bounds of energy. I wake up That's in the good. morning, energy, energy, go to bed at night. You know, sometimes it's hard because, you know, I haven't used up all my energy. <laughs> and one of the key things that they taught me was the, the was that I have so much energy, the importance of a scene and matching energies with my castmates. Mm -hmm. um, and so to, to create the world that we try to cre create when we're acting, um, and, and that's just been a key one for me. They, they, that's one, one of a million things that they have pinpointed about me individually that, that has helped my performance by leaps and bounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Uh, you sort of like when you were saying you have to match your energy to the other actors. Uh, if uh, maybe in a particular scene, if their energy is supposed to be up a little bit, but it's down a bit. So you're trying to match your internal feelings with theirs so that everything works out like evenly in the scene. Is that? Uh, right. And that's, that's a great way to put it. And, and, you know, like that's that's awesome because it's it's a great point, because in a scene, if, if it's supposed to be a subdued feeling and the person I'm acting with is more subdued, I, I can take kind of like, you know, their their energy as like a, a starting point to bring mine down to okay. kind of where to be in the scene. So okay. we find and maybe in the same way, you know, if mine is so high, you know, maybe bring somebody to. And we meet in the middle. And, and that's what's so beautiful about acting. Right. It's so many details right. that come together to help you create a picture that's right. um, that, that, you know, hopefully is what the audience needs at that moment in time. Yeah. And it's incredible. Yeah. So more or less, uh, the energy level has to be like a compromised energy level. That's right. Uh, Meeting in the middle, like uh, like you were saying, a meet, uh, meeting in the middle like that, yeah. That's right, yeah, great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another question I wanted to ask you, Nick, is that um, on Facebook, I noticed that you have a show that's called uh, Odd Jobs, the show about occupations. And uh, uh, in fact, in one of the episodes, uh, you interviewed your parents and... Uh, uh, I, I was just wondering, uh, is there any particular reason why you decided to do that uh, interview, that host, uh, host that interview show? Sure. So, um, for so for years, uh, me and me and one of my best friends, Logan. Shout out to Logan. Um, uh, he, um, we were talking about. We had seen a study, and the study said this: that the two things that people hate most in their lives are number one, traffic, <laughs> and number two, their jobs. And uh, and so we uh, we we saw it as a vehicle to maybe help people who are unhappy in their work, 
uh, to to see that there's so many options of ways to make a living. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the goal is uh, it's odd. We call it odd jobs to show about occupations. And, and it's just a catchy title. Not all the jobs are odd. There's, there's uh, mainstream, mainstream jobs in, in there, too. Um, but uh, and you know what's funny is we had thought about it for years, but uh, COVID happened and and stay at home orders and we were all in quarantine and it took it took a pandemic for me to kind of get going on it. <laughs> and yeah. so um, in the in the middle of COVID um, and one other thing about it, they typically came on. We would release them at eight o'clock every weeknight during COVID. And one goal of that was to give people a semblance of that life was still going on, even though we're all stuck at home, that there's still things happening at a specific time, a specific day, instead of just mm -hmm. day, endless days of staying at home, you know, just a month of not leaving the house. Um, and so the goal was, uh, like I said, to if, if someone's unhappy in their job, life is too short to to be unhappy with what you do that's true, um, that's true. and so uh the goal of that show it's so it's on facebook it's been on like a, no, a local network uh, uh here in uh rockingham county in in eden north carolina oh um, really great it's yeah. been on a local network here um and so it's it's just been a great show yeah. um I, I had loads of good feedback yeah. from it loads of folks who who learned about other professions and thought I can get out of the profession I dislike and find one that I really love. Right. And so you know the saying, there's that saying that uh, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That's true. That's that was true. the goal. That was the true goal of that show. That's true. That's true. So then you're actually part of that uh, uh, TV stations uh, programming schedule then. Sure. They, uh, they put, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, uh, our episodes were varying lengths. And so uh, when they come on the, the station, you know, they have to, sometimes I have to put a couple together. Sometimes the music one, I had a couple of our, our musicians from the area on the show and, um, and they, they were incredible. That show, we were just sitting around talking about music. Um, <clears throat> that show was our longest show. I think that one was, was 45 minutes, um, but it's, it was just awesome just sitting around talking with people about what they love to do. Um, and it just, it opened my eyes. There are so many things to do in the world. So many like ways to make a living, so many ways to, to have a fulfilling life that we, none of us should ever waste a moment doing something. So Steve Jobs did a commencement address for uh, Stanford university. And he said this, if you look at your schedule for today, and if it were the last day of your life, would you be satisfied with what you're doing on that day? If the answer is no for too many days in a row, mm -hmm. then you need to find something else that to do with your life. Um, because, you know, one thing that I, I like to think of is life is too short to just wake up, pay bills, and then shut it down, you know, to, to be born, to pay bills, and then to die. Life is too short for that. There needs to be meaning. There needs to be fulfillment. Um, and that's, you know, I, I think about it like this, uh, like a droplet of a droplet hitting water, hitting a lake and creating ripples. If we're living the life that makes us most happy and most fulfilled, it's going to be a droplet into water. And hopefully the ripples will affect people and they'll affect people and they'll affect people. Mm -hmm. And the world will just be such an incredible place because we've brought fulfillment, we've brought joy, we've brought contentment, uh, happiness, all the good characteristics. Um, and, and so we need to find the meaning in our lives that, that just inspire others to find the meaning in theirs, a meaning of, of just excitement to wake up in the morning and kind of kind of clap your hands and say yeah, the be, day is starting and I'm super excited about what's going to happen right and be and just be thankful that mm -hmm. that uh, you've been given the 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 talent you know if you have talent or the especially the health right. if you don't if you don't have your health right. everything else is nothing i mean that's right. that's what i've learned you know if you don't have your health Everything else comes second to your health. If you got your health, right. 
go, you know, go a hundred percent, you know, yeah. use a hundred percent of your energy. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. That, uh, that reminds me, you, know, you were talking about ripple effect and everything. I once heard a quote um, that said, um, that was talking about dreams, you know, every one of us has dreams and they were saying that whatever dreams you have, doesn't matter what they are. If your dreams don't scare you, you're not going big enough. And when I first oh, wow. heard that, that just like floored me. I says, wow. Okay. I mean, I couldn't, be, you know, it kind of, it kind of sent shivers up my spine, you know, and, hey. uh, and uh, I don't know if your dreams send shivers up your spine, but I, <laughs> I know they do mine, you know. Right. You, you know, that's a, that's a great point, Ed, because um, kind of before I, I got into acting, you know, um, I don't know if I dreamed I was dreaming big enough. And and I, I have an incredible support system. I have I have, you know, I might be biased about it, but I have like the world's best mom and dad. You know, that's so, great. That, that's right. Great. And, I, and I have like, you know, such an incredible friend group um, and and it's an incredible sister. Don't want to leave her out. Um, uh, and so I, I have such a good, stable, loving environment to, to grow and nurturing environment that's good. to grow that's out of. Good. And, and that's a great point at it. Before I got into acting, I don't think I was dreaming big enough. Um, and, and that's, and it's right. You know, our, our goals should scare us a little bit. That's right. Scare that's us right. A little bit. And, that's right. and, you know, it, it reminds me of when, you know, Teddy Roosevelt's talking about the, the man in the arena. Um, you know, we should create an arena of our lives and maybe the bear or whatever, whatever the obstacle is, our dreams, you know, we should attack them and should, should, they should be so formidable that it requires the best of us to, to knock That's them right. out. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, if, yeah. if we're not pursuing our best, yeah. you know, what are we doing? That's right. <laughs> That's so. right. Sort of uh, when you wake up in the morning, if you're not using like every ounce of what you've got until the very end of the day, when your head hits the pillow, it's right. like, like you were saying, what, you know, what's it all for? You yeah. Know, what's it all for? <laughs> uh, 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 one more quote that, uh, uh, well, I might be paraphrasing it, but to go along with that is that um, uh, in life, you know, all of us, like feel uncomfortable with situations, you know, like we were talking, maybe if something's new and we're unfamiliar, it's on un unfamiliar territory with us. And um, this one saying says that um, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. And I don't know how many times in my life that I have used that to mm. keep chasing the dream, you know, keep pursuing what right. was ahead. So I don't know uh, what your thoughts are on that. Sure, uh, it's, you know it, that's a great point. It's um, if we get comfortable being uncomfortable, you know what can stop us? That's right. That's right. What can stop us? <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I think maybe those who are maybe on the fence or on the brink and wondering, well, geez, I'd like to do this, and mm -hmm. it's like, well, if you don't feel uncomfortable for a little while, you know, it's never going to happen. So. You have to sort of, like they say, pick up your bootstraps and hang on and, that's and, right. and, and get ready for the ride. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Great yeah. Point. Yeah. Uh, talking about rides, uh, mm -hmm. you and I are both on a, a mutual uh, ride uh, currently. Sure. That is in the uh, uh, film that's uh, directed, and she's also acting in it by uh, Chocolate uh, Kea, whom I uh, interviewed uh, a few weeks ago, hmm. and that's the uh, the film that uh, she's entitled "The Coin Drop," right? And um, uh, could you kind of uh, enlighten us on uh, what uh, what character you play and uh, what that uh, character is all about? Sure. So, so my character, I'm playing I'm playing a handler. I'd say so. The the film is is going to be incredible. It's going to be uh, suspenseful. It's mm -hmm. suspenseful. It's going to be um, just uh, exciting, fulfilling, um, uh, an incredible a must watch. Um, definitely, definitely. Show, yeah. show is so talented. You know, she's she's a, a 
comedian. She's a model. She's an actress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Musician. Yeah, um, yeah, all over the spectrum. It's all over. Amazing. You know, there's that quote about um, uh, JFK said it, but John F. Kennedy said it. He said that um, this is the most talent joined together, except for when Thomas Jefferson dined alone. <laughs> and you know it's it's the same for Cho. You know when Cho dines alone, some of the best talents in the world in so many different areas. That's right. Um, that's right. That's right. But the the so I'm gonna play a handler. I'm gonna people are gonna come to me with their problems in the in the movie. I'm gonna fix them. You know I'm, yeah. I'm a fixer. That's You're what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and so uh, folks yeah, are gonna come to me. Yeah. And, in and the, the, including uh, including uh, my character, I think you'll probably <laughs> have a little. Uh, a little dealings with him, but we won't reveal too much of the plot. Um, <laughs> folks will have to see the show, you know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I saw the cast list, and the cat, you know, the cast list has some of the most yeah. incredible people. You yeah. know, they're incredible performers, but they might be even more incredible people. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. 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 And so, you know, it's it's just some of the some of the best folks to ever walk yeah. the planet. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Super excited to perform with them. Yeah, I know when she uh, first uh, posted an Instagram story where she showed a picture of the uh, uh, the uh, cast list page on her uh, laptop there, and that's that was sort of like the debut advertisement for the right. uh, for the project. And like you were saying, I looked at that cast list, and it's like my gosh! I mean, it's. <laughs> It's such a long cast list of great talented people, you great know, all talent. all crammed into one project, and it's right. It's absolutely yeah, like you say, it's absolutely going to be amazing there, and uh, and and uh, uh, now uh, in the beginning to to make the film, it's sort of like a combination of uh, uh, on location scenes, which you and I are are going to have some together, sure. and, and also. Um, uh, uh, self tape scenes like like making a, a self tape audition. So, um, did you have to make a lot of those uh, self tape scenes uh, in advance of this uh, actual on location uh, work? Oh, so so uh, so not too much in this one. I've done I've done that in another production. That's that's always exciting to kind of see. Uh, you know your your prep work kind of pair with your the production that it goes into and see the puzzle pieces that fit together in such a a beautiful kind of tapestry yeah you know yeah. just the pieces that come together to create the whole and that's that's one of the things I'm most excited about yeah. about the production yeah. I, I thought especially great was uh, sort of those uh, teaser uh, uh, mm. A post that she put out about the uh, the one girl uh, calling the uh, uh, the uh, the facility, uh, which I won't give too much away right now. She was sure. calling the and, and talking to the person over the phone on the park bench there. And I says to myself, I says, my gosh, I says these are great teasers. I says if people, if people don't want to see the final project uh, from this. Uh, what more? Can, what what can more can they want to be teased about? You know, with the great uh, uh, teaser post like that, the the park scene, and then mm. uh, uh, the interior uh, uh, camera shot, uh, the interior scene with the uh, Cho and, uh, right. and uh, one of the uh, the other actresses. And uh, I says, I I, I, says, I says this is an excellent way to just to kind of peek peak people's curiosity right. to, you know to want to watch the play like that so right that's right gosh and, and i'm so excited for it to come out it's going to be an incredible incredible production it is, it so, is. so everybody stay tuned for that one that one's uh it's it's going to be amazing that's right that's right that's right and uh and uh, they'll get they'll actually get to see the uh, the story unfold that's been teased before them so uh I think they're going to want to stick around for that, so they can, so they can see how the sto whole uh, story ends. So uh, that's right. Uh, has this uh, uh, been uh, the first project that you've worked on where it's a combination of like submitted self tape scenes accompanied by actual on location scenes? Is this is this the first uh, one of its kind for you? Let's see. So. Um... Oof, trying to think here. 
Uh, there, there's been at least one other one, but it's it's awesome. You know, it's um, <clears throat> it's like the best of both worlds. Like um, because you're you're performing in kind of the comfort of of wherever we, you know, you know, now that that we've had been through COVID and all that, I think all actors have like kind of a home uh home place where they've been acting yeah, from. Yeah, and so yeah, it's yeah. awesome when you, you know, it's it's comfortable. It's amazing to act in kind of that it, let's call it an acting nest you know <laughs> to act in your acting nest yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and or, it's so much fun to act in your acting yeah, nest. Or, or a uh whoa, whoa what do they term it uh we could call it our acting crib something that's like right that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right and, and it's so much fun to act out of that you know but then to to, to be thrust into the world and to see uh to see what what can come next it's yeah. incredible and so yeah. it's it's such an interesting pairing i i haven't done many like that but you know I've, I've done a couple and it's awesome but it's i can't i can't wait to do this one me either yeah and i i can't i can't uh, i look forward and i can't wait to to actually meet you and everybody else in person because that's right acted with you and with Cho and so many of the other, you know, ones on Zoom and um, uh, I don't know, it'll it'll probably be a, like a surreal experience. And it's like, That's oh my right. God, you're, you know, are you a real person? Oh my God, I've seen you on <laughs> screen and you're actually real. Wow, you know, it's gonna gonna uh, gonna floor me. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, one thing that's interesting about that is is I like. Um, you know, we've met these people acting virtually, and and you know, uh, we, I've you know, I've met a few in person, but um, you know, they become part of your hearts. You know, they it's do. such an interesting dynamic they that do. these people have become a part of your heart, but you haven't met, you know, you know, haven't necessarily met them in person. Um, no, and it's, well, yeah, that's for a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of the projects, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just it's such a such a unique feeling. And and you think, you know, a few years ago, you know, some years ago, this would never have happened. Um, but it's it's so awesome. The people have such a unique ability to communicate with one another, and we keep pushing the envelope, finding new ways to communicate. Uh, no person is an island, and no, the, no. we keep pushing the bounds, keep pushing the bounds, and and it's so awesome. You know, what if what if one day, you know, I hope. I hope this never happens really. What if one day, you know, <laughs> we have technology where, you know, it's as if someone's sitting beside you, you know, and it's like, and, and it's kind of like, you know, in Anna's, in Anna's movie with the Musgrave ritual, you know, that immersive background, yes, and it's yeah. so awesome, you know, we're all in that background right, and, you know, right. and, you know, we have Alex who's over in Oregon and, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, all of us pretty much are the rest are on the East coast. Right, and, right. But we're all in that room together, you know, and, it's incredible. I mean, it's yeah, the technology is just mind blowing. What uh, you know, whatever uh, form it takes, yeah. So right. Yeah. Well, like I says, I mean, I'm really, really looking forward to working with you on Cho's uh, project, uh, the Coin Drop, and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I know it is uh, to work right. with, with all of you, and uh, I really want to thank you a lot for coming on my show today and telling telling us all about yourself and uh, your background and your projects and what you've done and uh, what your aspirations are and things like all of that. And uh, it's, it's just been an awesome, it's been an awesome pleasure to finally speak one-to-one -one with you. I'll, right. I'll right. On that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, Ed, it's been incredible to come on the show. I was honored when you asked, I was honored. I was uh, super excited. And uh, and it's just been uh, you know e you know my wildest dreams were that it was going to be incredible, but it's just you know it's been even even more than that. <laughs> um, too, and, my end too, yeah. No, this has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, and you, you're so talented at this, and you know I can't wait to you know I've seen uh, I've seen shows, and can't wait to see the rest of them. And and uh, you like we were saying about show, you have that too, Ed. You know, it's, it's what task is that going to do next, you know, and he's going to be great at it. And so uh, it's, uh, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. And I'm a huge fan of yours too. Uh, like I said, oh. I've always enjoyed working with you and 
really look forward to uh, to talking to you today, and uh, it's been it's been an honor honor and a pleasure to to finally speak with you. So, and it'll be a bigger honor and pleasure when I actually meet you in person. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Likewise. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is uh, Edward S. Redcar, and uh, you've been listening to my uh, and watching my interview with uh, uh, Nick Parler. And uh, thank you very much for watching my YouTube uh, channel talk show. And until we meet again, have a good day and a good week. Bye-bye.